Okay, so let's talk about the participants. So in the study, there was 214 uh, men and women, uh, 107 men, 107 women who had all been married less than one year at the time of testing. Participants were obtained from the public records of marriage licenses issued within a large county in the Midwest United States. Traditionally conservative country, I think we would agree. Um, I don't know. Midwest, that probably encompasses quite a few states, but let's just say that. All couples who had been married within the designated time period were contacted by letter and invited to participate in this study. The mean age of males average, sorry, the, 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 the mean age of the male sample was 25.46 years. So that's your average male in the group. The mean age of the female sample. Do you guys remember a mean, medium, and mode? The different average methods taught in school. I don't know if they still do that anymore, but it looks like mean seems to be the default now they use in, in these studies. Um, the mean age of female sample was 24.78. So it looks like the guys were about a year older than the women. Couples were given $25 per couple in return for their participation in the study, which was 2008. What is that? 40 bucks in today's money with inflation and the way they're robbing us with inflation? I don't know. You guys figure that. You, you tell me in the comments. Let's keep going, though. Um, so the abstracts, materials and methods, participants, procedure. Okay, so let's do the procedure next. Participants engaged in three separate episodes of assessment as part of a large set of studies. First, they received through the mail a battery of instruments to be completed at home in their spare time. Second, participants came to a lab testing session approximately one week after receiving the first sequence of mail questions. During the testing session, spouses were separated to preserve independence and to prevent contamination from contact or discussion. It was during this second testing session that the participants completed four instruments relevant to the present report. Factors in choosing a mate, preferences concerning potential mates, uh, family and marital preferences questionnaires, and goals wanted in a partner. Third couple, so the third round of questions, third couples were interviewed towards the end of the second testing session using a standard set of interview questions to provide information about the couple's relationship and to give the interviewers an opportunity to observe participants so that they could provide independent assessments of each other of each participant's physical attractiveness, face, body, and overall attractiveness. Confidentiality. Now, the reason why they did this, by the way, is because they use the most attractive women in the study to determine what beautiful women want. Um, so they're basically asking the guys to rate the gals. Makes sense, right? You want to know what beautiful women want? Let's identify what is objectively beautiful in this group of 107 people, and then we'll survey them on their opinions. Uh, mate preference instruments. Do, do, do. Should we get into that? Basically, it's on a rating from zero to four. Um, and, well, I mean, I'll explain the scale in a minute when I get to it. But zero would be irrelevant or unimportant. And four would be indispensable. Like it's a 100% must have. So essentially zero means nothing or anything close to zero means nothing. And closer to four means it's absolutely must have. There's, there's, it's gotta be there, must have it. Uh, so we'll skip the instrument part, judgment, physical attractiveness. So they would basically rate, rate you know, rate them, uh, the face, the body, overall attractiveness, uh, one through seven. So they would assign scores. Uh, rating mail results. Okay, so the results here. So this is kind of the important stuff. Um, so let's start. So there's one, two, three, four different categories. Now, before I get to the categories, here's what I want to do in the live chat. Actually, I'm going to do this as a survey. I'm not going to do the survey. Actually, we'll do this in a live chat like this. You guys tell me what you think in... Actually, there's too many categories for me to do it that way. We're just going to roll with this. Follow me. Follow me here. So the good gene indicators, physical genes, you know, symmetrical face, you know, uh, like muscularity, uh, health cues, obviously, you know, um, 
those usually comes from things like facial, you know, symmetry. Uh, if you weren't healthy growing up or you didn't have a, a normal hormone profile, you don't get a symmetrical face. You don't get a structured jawline. You don't get certain things, right? Um, so the good gene indicators were picked up in this regard. And the highest, I'll go highest from lowest, okay? We'll do it that way. The highest is sex appeal. So does he look sexy? Does he look good naked? It's right there. Looks matter. Okay. So that, that is the absolute highest with a three. Okay. There's only one in this entire category of survey results that got a four, but three is generally the highest. So I'll give you the, the score. So three with sex appeal, 0.28. So just beneath that. So two, eight. Uh, physically attractive. And then we go down to 0.23, physically fit. So not obese, obviously V taper, broad shoulders, narrow waist. Those are the general cues that women look for, for good gene indicators. And then tied after that with 0.2 is good looking and then masculine. And the absolute last one, which you'd think would be higher, based on if you ask women their opinion, is intelligence with 0.1. So according to the way that they put the survey together, statistically insignificant. The next category was good investment ability indicators. And again, I'll go from highest to lowest. Uh, 0.25 was the highest in this category. So Again, not as high as 0.3. So 0.3 sex appeal was the absolute highest. So good investment ability indicator significantly lower at 0.25, sorry, is older than self-expressed in years. Chicks dig older guys. Shocking, right? Um, I've said this before. Usually somewhere between 7 to 15 years age difference between uh, dude and a chick especially for longer term mating strategies, it seems, because this is typically what these what these surveys are trying to establish um, is more than reasonable. When you get into like the Leonardo DiCaprio stuff where he's like pushing 50 and he's dating a 19 year old, some people say that gets a little bit weird, but hey, if you can pull it off, you know, have at it, right? Because he can. Anyway, so number one was older than self, right? Something that guys get shamed for all the time, which is what women are mate selecting. This is literally what they're selecting in the survey. The men pick the most beautiful women. Then they ask the most beautiful women, what do you want? They basically said, I want everything, but they but there's a degree to how much of everything they actually want. And older than self came right up at the top at good investment ability. After that, tied for second at 0.22 was good earning capacity the ability to uh, provide and being a college graduate, which is interesting because they ranked intelligence low, but having a degree higher than that in the next category. So they don't care if you're smart. They don't care if you're street smart. That doesn't matter to you. But if you have a piece of paper on the wall framed in mahogany with little letters after your name, that matters to women. That's, that's attractive probably because it ties into good earning capacity. That's that's probably the default thinking that they would use, I would imagine. You guys can chop it up in the, the chat. Uh, so that was tied at 0.22. The next below that at 0.19 was potential earn income expressed in dollars. Uh, so good earning capacity. So having the ability to earn ranks higher than potential income capacity. So that's pretty much in line you know, with what I've talked about. Below that, next is 0.14. So now we're approaching statistically insignificant. Um, is favorable social status or rating? So status uh, doesn't matter as much as, as earning potential or being older. Interesting. And then last in this category for good investment ability indicators at 0.13 is ambition and industriousness. Uh, next after this, we're in the hypothesized good parenting indicators and the apps. So the highest score in this entire survey, meaning it is absolutely desirable and must be in place. Again, this is for longer term mating, of course, is desire for home and children at 0.4. It's a perfect score. 
Below that at 0.3, which is still very significant, is emotional stability and maturity. Beneath that is 0.28, raising children well with goal priorities. Beneath that at 0.24, likes children. 0.23 is fond of children. And right at the very bottom, statistically insignificant, again, at 0.12, is being kind and understanding. Being kind and, and understanding ranks at 0.12, whereas being sexy, having sex appeal, is 0.3. So you can see, so all of that bullshit that, you know, you hear women say all the time when they're surveyed, well, what kind of guy do you like? And, you know, they're on the street and she's like, well, I want a guy that's kind and understanding and he's got to be funny. And, you know, they start to go from there. But kind of, but kind always seems to pop up very high when you ask women their opinion publicly, um, where they might be judged or critic or, or critiqued for their opinion. I mean, you know, if you ask a woman on the street, the average woman anyway, that's not a 304, has an OnlyFans or anything like that, but the average woman, you know, um, what's important, they're not going to blurt out sex appeal, which is very, very high on the ranking list, right? But anyway, kind and understanding always, always comes at first. So here's the next section, hypothesize, hypothesized, say that word properly, good partner indicators. And there's three in this category, the highest ranked at 0.24, being a loving partner, 0.14 is devotion, which is pretty close to statistically insignificant. And right at the very bottom, the absolute lowest rank in this entire survey, uh, next to intelligence, which was ranked 0 0.10, <coughs> 0 0.11, loyalty. So what we've heard, and I put this in the description of the video, <clears throat> excuse me, what we've heard from women is they want loyal men that are kind and understanding <clears throat> and are intelligent. <laughs> and they rank those three things the absolute lowest. A lot of quote unquote nice guys out there will you know, often say, I'm a nice guy, I'm intelligent, I'm kind, I'm understanding, and I'm super loyal to a woman. And lo and behold, women doesn't matter to them. It's st statistically insignificant to them if you're kind, understanding, loyal, or intelligent. If you have a piece of paper on the wall that's framed in mahogany with little letters after your name, that's good. You could be dumb as shit, but you could have a degree and that's good for them. But real intelligence doesn't really matter. Of course, having money, that matters. Having earned potential, that matters. So why intelligence is not tied into earning potential is interesting because they should correlate shouldn't they wouldn't you think so i don't know you guys tell me in the chat here so that's it that's it the most important indicators to women are desire for home and children sex appeal being physically attractive and masculine those are the main things being being a being a hot guy that has the ability to make money that's it er, earning potential ranked up high there and again loyalty kind of understanding intelligence doesn't matter shit anyway there's loads and loads and loads and loads of uh cited references in this again i'm going to put it in the description of the video once i get off the uh the show at the end of it and you guys you know can drill down to it but references and cross references they're listed in here going back as far as there's 1986 from one of their studies, 1970s. This guy's been doing this for decades. David Buss has been doing this for ages. He's he, he's a dinosaur in this space. He's got lots and lots of stuff in here. Um, I might at one point, I mean, if you guys are interested, you know, you can tell me in the, the comments, go through some of these other ones as well, because they're all intertwined and interlinked in different ways. And... Yeah, I just I just find this you know this stuff interesting because it's like, you know, you go around and it's like, oh, just be a nice guy, just be yourself, you know, um, be her friend, you know, like what do we all hear, you know, growing up, buy her flowers, open the door for her, you know, be kind, be understanding, 
Kind, kindness is ranked very, be loyal to her. Loyalty doesn't even matter. These are married women that took this survey and loyalty was statistically insignificant to them. It was more important that you were sexy, hot, masculine, earned money, had a future potential to earn money, had some kind of degree on the wall. Those things were way more important than loyalty, which is interesting because, you know, you have all these guys going around, they just get so pissed off and like, I'm just a nice guy and I'm loyal. And it's like, well, the ladies have spoken. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here, that clips from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment, you'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.